Ну, наверное, Либер второй Либер, принял. Да, восьмой, восьмой номер у нас. Э, да, Лоренц э, Смирелли. Второй лидер команды. Да. I myself is at an autonomous stage because of spike in the volleyball because I have correct technique and can spike the ball with great power. Cognitive is the beginner stage of learning how to perform a skill. It is the stage where people are not very good at the skill but have lots of room for improvement. They do not have much knowledge of the skill and cannot perform it very well. Associative is where you can perform the skill well but it is still difficult to do. You cannot yet do the skill at a really high level but can do it really well. You also have a greater knowledge of the skill which helps you perform it better. Autonomous is when you have gotten great at the skill which then you start thinking of other things while doing the skill. It becomes second nature to you which means it can be done at a very high skill level without much thought. The knowledge of the skill is also very high which means you know all of the technique to do with the skill. In my first video of me spiking, I noticed that my arm is not fully extended when I make contact with the ball. This not only affects the projectile motion of the ball, but also affects the force of which is exerted when I make contact with the ball. My arm should be much straighter for me to get a much better angle of release so that I can hit the ball at a steeper angle. My triceps, agonists, are not fully flexed which affects the height at which I make contact with the ball. My biceps brachii, antagonist, is also not fully extended which means my arm can still stretch out to a much further distance. Other muscles that influence my arm being fully extended in this action are my deltoids and my pectoris major. The act of stabilizing muscles in my arm is extended in such a way so they do in fact also affect whether my arm is fully extended or not. My elbow joint, which is a hinge joint, needs to be extended as well in order for my entire arm to be straight. If I stay flexed at the elbow, then I will not be able to extend my arm to its maximum height. The height at which I make contact with the ball is not as high as it needs to be in order for me to hit the ball at the best possible angle, which is around 210 or 220 degrees. I need to have my arm more extended so that I can make contact with the ball at a greater height. Force formation, projectile motion and balance and stability are all biomechanic factors that are involved in all sporting activities. All three may not apply for every sport, but in volleyball, all of these biomechanic factors play important roles in getting more skilled and mastering the sport. The first thing we'll be talking about is force summation. Force summation is the specific actions or movements used to include as many muscle groups as possible to obtain the maximum outcome of any physical action or movement. This could include trying to achieve your maximum leap or to throw something a maximum distance or even to punch something as hard as you possibly can. So the skill that I'm applying force summation to is spiking in volume. Force summation helps me achieve the maximum possible outcome for any particular sport or movement. To properly use force summation, you have to use as many muscle groups as possible starting from larger muscle groups moving into smaller ones. You also have to move your body in a certain way and have specific timing to include as many muscle groups as possible to get your best result. In volleyball, force summation is used when spiking the volleyball because I need to use all of my muscle groups in a specific order to jump as high as I possibly can. Force summation is also used to swing as hard and fast as I can when hitting the ball. Before spiking, I start my run up in a low position, making my quadriceps to an eccentric contraction. I then bring my arms back, preparing to swing at my shoulder joint, which is the ball and socket joint, allowing me to do this motion. I then squat a little lower just before I take off, staying flexed in the knee joint as my quadriceps still perform an eccentric contraction. As I take off, my gastrocnemius, soleus, quadriceps, hamstrings, deltoids, abdominals, obliques, and rectal spinae all contract as I jump to allow me to be as explosive as I possibly can. They all become the agonist muscles as they are contracting and causing the movement of jumping. After I have leaped into the air, my arms have retracted and I'm in a position to hit the ball. My hitting arm is flexed at the elbow, whereas my non-hitting arm is fully extended. 
helping me with balance in the air and accuracy. While I'm in this position, my deltoids on both arms are contracting, allowing me to have my arms locked in place. But as I swing through the ball, my elbow extends at the joint and my, del my deltoid contracts in an explosive movement. I must do all of these actions in a specific order and in a specific time frame to allow me to hit the ball at the maximum height and to hit it as hard as I possibly can. I must use all of my major muscle groups and joints, starting from larger muscles moving into smaller muscle groups. The six stages of force formation are very important in order for me to perform the skill correctly. These six stages are, big, are bigger to smaller muscles, correct sequence, over a long period of time, direction of force, follow the movement through, and a stable base. These are all very important stages in my force formation in my video on me sparking a volleyball. They were all well, re represented very well. Stable base also links it with balance and stability, which means the two biomechanic factors work together well. All factors have been used while I spiked the volleyball and were very important when it came to me getting a better at volleyball using force formation. Force formation helped me improve my volleyball skill because it helped me give the basis of my technique down of how to properly run up and spike the volleyball. It also helped me understand the importance of all six stage stages of force formation to obtain the best possible outcome. Force formation helped me hit the ball better as I was able to jump much higher which allowed me to hit the ball at a steeper angle. Projectile motion is the height, speed and angle of which an object is released and in this case it is a volleyball. There are many factors that influence projectile motion but the main parts of it is angle of release, height of release, speed of release, gravity, air resistance and spin. Projectile motion determines how far a ball will travel in the flight path of that ball after force is applied to it. If I hit the ball at too flat of an angle with not much spin, it will fly out the back of the court which is displayed as the black arrows on this diagram. This is how angle of release influences projectile motion. If I were to hit the ball at a steeper angle with much more topspin, it will land within the court. This is anywhere in between the blue and the yellow arrows. An optimal hitting angle will be around 210 and 220 degrees. This is shown here between the two orange arrows. The green arrow is the best possible angle at 215 degrees, but anywhere in that area is an optimal angle to hit the ball. The arrows are all influenced by angle of release and are determined by other factors of projectile motion like speed of release and height of release, which also determine whether, whether the ball will land in the court or not. To hit the ball at a steeper angle, the height of release needs to be much higher. The height of release is the height at which you make contact with the ball with your hand whilst hitting. The higher the height of release, the steeper the angle you may hit it at because it is higher above the net. If the ball is not high enough above the net and you apply too much power, then it will go very flat and will not land within the court. Determining whether the ball lands within the court also depends on the speed of release and the spin of the ball. The harder you hit the ball with no spin, the more chance you have of hitting it straight out the back of the court. But if you hit it just as hard the next time, but apply top spin, then the ball has a much higher chance of landing in the court. Top spin has a huge influence on the ball's flight path as it travels through the air. This is also where air resistance comes in. The more top spin applied, the faster the ball will drop. This is because of the high and low air pressure that is passing over and under the ball. Higher air pressure travels over the ball and lower air pressure travels under the ball, thus bringing it down because of the high air pressure weighs the ball down. In this picture, the lower blue circle represents the ball that I hit in the pre-testing of my video. Since my arm is not fully extended, I do not hit the ball at its maximum possible height. The second blue circle, the one above, shows the height difference at which I made contact with the ball if my arm was fully extended. This affects the angle of which I hit the ball, meaning if I hit the ball at a maximum height, I can hit it at a much steeper angle. Another force that has an influence on bringing the ball down within the court is gravity. Gravity is a constant pressure that is applied to the ball, which falls at 9.8 meters per second. Gravity helps bring the ball to the ground as well as all the other factors of projectile motion. They must all work in unison for the ball to actually land in the court because if one factor is not right or is missing, like the height of release or the speed of release, then the ball will either not land in the court 
or might not even make it over the net. Balance and stability is the third of my biomechanic factors but is one of the most important because balance and stability is what allows me to use force formation and to even run up to hit the volleyball. Balance and stability is important when it comes to spiking the ball because if I am balanced and have a low center of gravity as I run up, I'll be more stable and in a better position to jump allowing me to jump much higher. In this image, I am balanced because my line of gravity passes through my center of gravity and lands within my base of support. All of these parts of balance and stability need to be in line in order for me to, comp to be completely balanced while running up and jumping. Also, being balanced in the run up by being stable at the core and having good technique in the run up allows me to be stable in the air which then also lets me use force submission properly because I am in a balanced position. If I am off balance and my center line does not pass through my center of gravity, then some muscle groups in my body will be used to keep me balanced and not used to spike the volleyball, which means I will not be able to hit the ball as hard or as accurate. If I am moving forward and staying balanced in the run up, then I'll be much more controlled in the air, allowing me to hit the ball much harder and have more control over where I hit the ball. Take this image for example, this player has jumped off of a small base of support, only one foot which then makes him unbalanced in the air and therefore he cannot hit the ball with the maximum power. Balance and stability has helped me increase my skills by getting a volleyball by having a stable base when I run up and as I am jumping, making me more controlled in the air and also being able to hit the ball at a much higher height and with much greater power. In my pre-test, my balance and stability is, is just as good as the post-test. I have a stable body while I run up and I am balanced while in the air, meaning I am just as balanced and stable in both these tests. This gives me a much better chance of hitting the ball with greater power and also helps me with proper technique. In the post-test of me spiking a volleyball, I have stayed at an autonomous level but have worked on having a fully extended arm while spiking a volleyball. This is shown in the video because the height of release is much greater than the height of release in which I make contact with the ball in the pre-test video. Since my arm is much straighter, I can hit the ball at a much steeper angle which gives me more of an offensive advantage. In this image, my arm is being represented by the black arrow, showing that it is straight as I am swinging the ball compared to my last image in my pre-test where my arm is slightly bent at the elbow. For my skill learning of spiking a volleyball, I had used whole part hole landing. I had used this because it means I could practice the skill as a whole but consistently hitting volleyballs and then go and work on little things that I did not think were good enough while I was spiking the volleyball, whether it was the run up or the angle of my hand or the height of where I hit the volleyball. I practiced my skill in a distributed way because I start by hitting 10 volleyballs in a row, then I would stop and do another drill which I can specifically work on a certain part of my spike. Then I can go back to spiking volleyballs and apply the skill I've just been working on. I feel that these types of practice works best for me because I can keep working on little things in my swing that aren't quite right and practice them and work on them until they are good enough and I can then apply it to my volleyball swing. Factors that I feel have major impacts on my skill learning is the facilities and competition. The facilities at Oreo College are of great quality, especially the balls and the gym. We are fortunate to have such facilities and this is what really enables me to practice my skill and get better as a volleyball player. Competition also plays a huge part because of the other skills that I compete against or even the people in my class or students I play with. I want to push myself to be as good as them or even to be better. These factors are the biggest influence on me when it comes to skill learning and improving my skill. When it comes to sports psychology, three of the following factors all play important roles in me being a better volleyball player and being able to perform at the highest level I can compete at. These include mental rehearsal, confidence and concentration. Mental rehearsal helps me when I play and train for volleyball because I go through what needs to be done all my roles on the court in my mind so that I prepare myself for different scenarios and situations. I'll go through in my mind how I run up for a swing, the footing I need to use when blocking, and also techniques and positions that I need to be in when passing the ball. These are all some of the main roles I go through in my mind to mentally prepare myself for a game so that I can be 100% focused and ready for any situation. 
confidence has a huge role with me being a volleyball player because it gives me that mental boost that I need to be able to do the actions in my highest ability. I need confidence to back myself and to get up and hit hard for a spike and also to pass or even to stand in the way of an opposition hitting so I can dig the ball when the other team hits it. Confidence allows me to play to my full potential because I'll be confident enough to do certain roles. Being com- confident also reflects onto other players and allows me to be a leader because other players in my team will see that I'm backing myself, which I hope will give them more confidence too. Concentration is also an important factor in me being a volleyball player because if I do not concentrate, then I'll forget to do things or make errors due to me not being ready or prepared. Concentrating allows me to perform at my best because I'll react to anything that happens to me on the court, whether it's someone from the opposition who tips the ball over which requires me to dive, or if it's me watching the player to make sure I block them and make sure I'm standing in the right position. Concentration is a key factor for any player to be able to perform to their best ability. It helps the player focus on the main roles of the team and helps them read the game much better which means they can predict play and make good players because they are focused and ready for any situation. Whether it is learning the biomechanics for my chosen skill or knowing the type of training that suits me best or even knowing what kind of mental factors help me perform my highest skill, all of these factors in one way or another have significantly helped me in becoming a better volleyball player and improving my chosen skill of spiking in volleyball. Thank you for watching my video of biomechanics of performance.